It's the beginning of September, this is the Wood Grafter, so it's time for the monthly update. Hi, welcome to the Wood Grafter. I'm Andy Gile, and if you're new here, our mission is to inspire, educate, and support you in your journey to becoming a better woodworker. We do that through a whole variety of videos, step-by-step -step project builds that take you all the way from design all the way through to production. Tips, tool reviews, techniques, safe working inside the workshop videos. Every now and then we'll do a deep dive in a specialist subject of interest. And once a month we get together for a chat, just like this one, to see what's going on in the world. So if that sounds good and you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing now. Leave me a thumbs up, leave a comment and get in touch. With that said, Let's get cracking with this month's update. So what a month it's been. We've launched the website into beta mode. I've had a blacklist from YouTube. We'll talk about that in a second. The channel continues to perform. We've hit the first milestone of our revised annual targets and it's all looking pretty good. So let's get into the update. So you can see I'm keeping the focus on the education side, inspire, educate and support the journey to becoming a better woodworker. I am changing the schedule, however, and I'm just dropping off for a period of time that Tuesday video. We're still focused on the Friday and there'll still be one video a week coming out, but I'm just relaxing on that Tuesday video. The reason is I want more time to start to create the detailed content over on the website, detailed educational courses, and that obviously is quite a big investment of time, so I just need to close some time back because I'm running out of hours in the day. And we'll try that for the next couple of months and see how we get on. If we notice a big impact on the channel, we'll obviously revisit that and do something different. In terms of the goals, we're doing really, really well. We're about to pass the 5,000 subscriber mark. We've surpassed the 1 million minutes of watch time mark, and we're maintaining the 98% greater than likes overall on the channel. I've now got the community website into beta mode and I'm now beginning to create the content for the education website. Now both of those I want to go live with at the end of this month or the beginning of October to pretty much coincide with the end of that first year as the wood grafter. So look out for that. Registrations are now open, I'm taking pre-registrations and I've got quite a long list already of people who want to come and join the community. So if you want to add your name to the list head over to www thewoodgrafter.com and just fill in the pre-registration form. I'll put you on the list and then I'll keep you informed of what's going on by email and then when the doors are open, I'll invite you to the community. So thank you for all the support, all the excitement. It's looking really, really good. So we're on target to meet every one of our 2019 goals, which is excellent news. My business model stays the same. This seems to be working as an idea, taking a commission in and using the commission to create a project and some training courses that's available to the community. In terms of those courses, what I've settled on is a concept known as a learning path. Now I'll be creating a whole lot of training modules and a training module could be how to use a router, how to use a mitre saw, how to set up and tune the router table, safety in the workshop, how to cut a tenon, how to cut dovetails. And there'll be standalone modules that give you the information that's required to do what it says on the tin. And then I'll create courses that focus on a particular project, how to build a Versailles planter, how to build a coffee table, how to build a side table, how to build an outside bench, whatever that project may be. And those projects predominantly are driven by the commissions I take into the business. So you'll now have the ability to walk step by step through a course and there'll be enough information in the course to take you where you need to be. But if you want to deep dive on a particular subject, you can then come straight down into those sub modules and you create your own learning path. So if you're an expert on dovetails and mortises, you don't need to take those smaller modules, you just crack on and get your project built. If you want a deep dive, you can do. So you then tune your journey through that training. So that's a concept that we've settled on as we've been running the beta pilot around this, and that's quite exciting. So a lot of my focus is much more on the education side than the commissions at the moment. So I've just stepped back a little bit on the marketing of the commissions, but I will be ramping that up again soon because the commissions drive the education of course. So the monthly plan has changed ever so slightly. I stuck to the two videos a week coming out through the back end of August, early September. And then I put the channel on hold and I'll come back to that in a second because that was a bit of an interesting time. And we're now here with this monthly update. 
later than advertised but I did want to complete the design series. I now want to focus a little bit more of my time on the course creation so we've got some good content over on the website and as I say registration for the site will be open at the end of the month going live at the beginning of October. Let me explain to you why I put the channel on hold. A couple of weeks ago I got an email from what I thought was YouTube and it was telling me that there's too much spam on my channel and a number of people had reported that and they were going to investigate the channel to see whether it was fit for purpose and the recommendation was put all your videos on hold. Now you think about the amount of work that I've put into building the channel everything is copyrighted to the, the wood grafter there's nothing in there that's spam I think the videos do pretty much what they say they're going to do on the tin and I've been really open with the community in terms of what we're doing and what we're trying to achieve so to get a message saying it was spam was really really disheartening to the point where I thought do you know what I'm going to stop it I'm just going to close the YouTube channel down and I'll just focus on the business but then I reread the email and the email just didn't feel right let me show you the email I got so it looks pretty genuine it comes from YouTube support it comes to Andy so it knows who I am addresses me as a wood grafter and it's got the YouTube logo on it and it's got the links at the bottom here off to the YouTube as well as their address. Hello the wood grafter we received a complaint that there are many spam videos on your YouTube channel but you don't have to worry we'll review your channel by our YouTube team and we'll let you know by email in the meantime we recommend you not to upload new videos fill in the following information and reply to this email otherwise if your channel is not reviewed by our YouTube team, your channel will be closed. Thank you for your patience in this response. So a pretty clear and dire message, I think. Do what we say or we're going to close you down. And then he wants to know the channel URL, whether I've got copyright material on there, my email address, and my password. And at the footer here, it's got some links to the help center, email options, uh, reporting spam. And it's got the copyright 2019 logo and their head address over in the USA. I read that and I read it again and it just didn't feel right. And there's a few things about the email that made me a little bit suspicious. And I explored this a bit deeper and the email address it came from was actually ytube-sup at mail.ru. Now .ru is an extension for a Russian company. So it seems to me that a California-based company that manages my account in Ireland sends me an email from Russia. That didn't seem sensible to me. Also, when you reread it, there's pretty poor English construction inside here. We'll review your channel by our YouTube team. We'll review your channel by our YouTube team. Surely should say your channel will be reviewed by our YouTube team. So the English in that is a little bit suspect and a little bit poor. And it then struck me this is a strange request. If you know who I am and you've had a complaint about me and you've sent me the information asking me to do something about it, why do you need my channel URL? Why do you need my email? And why do you need my password? Because you can just review the content of the video without accessing my account. Also felt a bit strange. Then these links at the bottom here aren't actually links. They're just embedded JPEGs. So the information just didn't seem right to me. So I wrote off to YouTube asking for their advice. And I wrote off to the legal support team. Didn't follow any of the links inside the email. I went to my channel, looked at support, found their legal team and wrote directly to their legal team. And I was just pointing out, hi, I've received an email I'm suspicious of. It appears to be having embedded JPEGs. The email address is from Russia. My channel doesn't have spam. I'm not sure why you would need the details to check my channel. And I'm saying, obviously, I'm more than happy to comply. If I've dropped the ball, if I've made a mistake, let me know, and we'll do something about that. Uh, and please advise. And they quickly got in touch. Master of days, they came back to me. Hello. Thank you for reporting the issue to us. The message you received was not sent by YouTube. Instead, it was likely designed to give the impression that the message was from YouTube. We are aware of such impersonation attempts, and we encourage you to market as spam the emails you are receiving. YouTube will never send unsolicited emails asking for private information. Please do not respond with any information to these emails. So it's pretty clear. Now obviously that's the first scam email I've had. And I've thought about it, so why would they want that information? Because all they could do is come, th come through and mess about with my channel. And that would be a pain in the rump for myself. But what would somebody game apart from, you know, 
being mean, I guess. And then I realized that the YouTube channel is linked to my YouTube studio account. And that's where all the commerce sits. That's where we talk about the advertising, where the advertising revenue flows, where my payment details come from. So if they'd have got access to my YouTube channel, they could quickly get access to the heart of my account. And there's a lot of personal information that sits inside there on YouTube. So I thought I'd share that with you because A, it's the reason why I didn't produce videos. I just stopped while I sorted that out with YouTube legal to make sure something hadn't gone wrong. I've subsequently changed all the passwords on all my accounts. So that's all been tightened down and refreshed just in case. And now we're back to the schedule that we've already spoken about. So if you are watching this as, you know, building your own YouTube channel up and looking at my journey as sort of some sort of barometer that I know people tend to do, be careful for those scams. If you get something coming through that doesn't feel right, doesn't look right, get in touch with YouTube directly and ask them, do not respond to the email, do not follow any links inside the email, copy the email, send it to YouTube and get advice. So that's why it slowed down and why I had that slight blackout in the channel. Exciting times. So how is the channel performing? So look at this watch time figures. We were looking for a million and we're now at nearly 1.1 million minutes viewed across the channel since we started back end of last November. Incredible, incredible performance. And I remember in the early days, if you've been with me for a while, I was getting excited that I'd managed to hit 24 hours of minutes watch time. Now look at it, we're over a million minutes. It's amazing. Mind blowing, but amazing. And the subscribers continues to grow as well. So I'm surprised by this growth. It's pretty linear, really, if you think about it. It is accelerating now as we get towards this end, but it's pretty linear. But we're still at 4,933 subscribers at the point of making this video, and our target is 5,000. So in the next two months, we get more than, what's that, 67 new subscribers. We've hit the monthly target. We're going to do that quite easily. The channel's growing at probably about 15 to 20 people a day at this moment in time. And don't forget that we've just come out of the summer season, uh, holiday season or vacation season, and that tends to slow YouTube viewing down, so I believe. So it accelerates again as you go up towards the festive seasons. So that's looking pretty good, I think, and that's, uh, therefore the channel is healthy. So last month I started a question section that seems to have been pretty well received. So we'll continue that this month. So if you do want to pose a question, just put it in the appropriate comment of the video and say, I have a question. I can then search on all my comments and I'll pull out the questions and I'll select some to come forward. You can always email me, andrewthewoodgrafter.com, go over to the website, www.thewoodgrafter.com and get in touch with any of the available forms. Let's look at this month's questions. The first one, what timber do you use? Planed all round or rough sawn? Well, this came from the coffee table series that we started to do. And if you remember, I did a mini series that was pretty well received on how I actually go through the design process. How do I start working with a customer and how do I move forward to having a plan I can then use in the workshop to build something? And the question came back from that as I was doing that, do I use plain all round or rough sawn timber? I've now got the planer jointer, and if you've not seen the video, check it out. And that was a big purchase. That was a big changing point in the Woodcrafter journey because I want to be using rough cut timber. And I explained the reasons why I wanted to do that on the planer jointer video. Fundamentally, I want to bring the rough sawn stock into the workshop and I want to mill it down myself as required. And the video series that we're currently working on building the coffee table will take you through that milling process. So to answer the question, I use rough sawn timber. On the coffee table design, why not have fewer wider pieces to form the top? <coughs> now, if you look at the design series, when I was actually doing the top, I'm creating a laminated top. And it's about 700 millimeters wide. And from memory, I modeled 10 individual laminations at 70 millimeter width. But the material I've got in the shop is between 200 and 220 millimeters. So why would I go for 10 individual slices if I could put three of those boards together and get a similar width? That's the basis of the question. So there's a few reasons why I do that. That's the worst case scenario. Going for those 10 strips at 70 millimeters is the worst case scenario. And I'll put in my plans that worst case scenario so I know what I'm working to. Then it comes down to the stock that I bring in. If you've ever had a P 
piece of wood in your workshop that's sort of wide and thin and you have the grain pattern going doing this across that board you'll notice that that board cups and as the board dries out you tend to get that cupping in now that cupping can be quite severe and if that's rough cut stock and you need to get a flat board you've got to take all of that cupping out until you can get a flat board and similarly on the top you have that hump you've got to take all that hump down so if that cup was about 20 millimeters you've got to take 20 millimeters of stock off your material before you can get down to the flat board so there's a lot of waste if you take that same board and you rip it down the middle and cut it in half you've taken that 20 millimeter bow and simplistically speaking you've taken it to a 10 millimeter so i can take 10 millimeters off the narrower board to get down to flat board so there's less waste so you've got to look at the stock that comes in and you make an informed decision if you've got a good flat stable stock that's been well dried well treated by your supplier then you can go for a wider board because you're not going to have that same cupping problem if it's coming in and it's not dry and it's going to continue to dry out it will continue to cup so you need to allow for that so it's about that waste of stock is point number one point number two is stability the stock will continue to move if i put three large wide boards together and laminate that each of those boards will continue to cup and very quickly you're going to have a wave effect on top of your table again if it's good quality stock that's well kiln dried and there's little movement to go when you're going to put it in a stable environment less of an issue now the narrower the stock becomes the less that cup is and as you actually laminate the boards together you orientate the grain anyway so you'll have some grain doing this the next piece of grain will do this then it will do this and it will do this so by breaking it down to narrower stock orientating the grain the wave effect is minimized and the more narrower pieces that you have the less that wave effect is on your final top over time so it's all about stability so the first point is about so the first point is about reducing the waste of the stock as you mill it down and the second one is about the stability of the tabletop now you can reduce that wave and that cup effect you can use things like breadboard ends but in this particular design i wasn't using breadboard ends and also there's no large struts underneath this particular top on this table to give me that overall stability so i want the top to be stable within its own design so, so for those reasons reducing the amount of waste and increasing the stability on the tabletop that's why i've designed it in the way i have However, the stock that come into the shop that you saw me rip down in the earlier episode is pretty stable. So I might actually go for wider and I'll make that decision once I've got the stock in front of me, I've milled it, I've looked at it and I've got a feel for what's there in the shop. That's when I make the final decision. So the plans give me the worst case scenario, allow me to minimize waste, stability inside the top. I will make the decision when I come to build. Now we forget about waste and stability for a second, a wider top tends to look nicer. And in fine furniture, if you can get that wide top with that consistent run of grain all over the top, that really does look quite nice. So it's always a compromise between the beauty of the product and the cost stability equation. And as woodworkers, we're always grappling with that. But that's why I did it. Hope that answers the question. This is a common question. What version of SketchUp are you using? I use SketchUp 2017. Now the reason I use SketchUp 2017, it was the last free downloadable version that SketchUp made. And they moved some time ago into the cloud. Now if you go to SketchUp today and you sign up for a, a free account, then the software that you're allowed to use continually, I think it's called SketchUp Make, is a cloud-based piece of software. Now because of my working pattern, I'm not always sat in front of my computer doing the design work. I can do that pretty much anywhere on my, on my laptop. And I'm always grabbing minutes here and there to put ideas down and start to create designs and so on and so forth. So I can't always guarantee I've got a good stable internet connection. So I don't really want to be using cloud-based software. I find it slows me down, the software gets in the way, it stutters, and it just breaks down that design flow that I tend to get into. So I like software that sits natively on my machine that I can access pretty much all the time. The last version was 2017. Now if you want to get hold of that version, go over to the SketchUp website, sign up for your free account and log on to their cloud-based software. Then go down to the bottom left-hand corner and you'll see the usual setting down there. And one of those settings is download software. Click on that download link. That will then take you to downloadable software. 
scroll down that and you'll come to 2017 version download that put your same account details in then you've got a standalone copy so i use 2017 for those reasons as we start to get revenue flowing in from you know the courses and the website and the education i'll be upgrading my license of 2017 to the commercial license because i'll be making money from the product and at that point it's a different licensing scheme with sketchup and then i'll go to the latest version because if you're paying you can download that version hope that helps any thoughts on varying the position of the stock on the planar jointer and this is about even wearing on the blades now if you watch the planar jointer video series in the final episode i was talking about how to actually mill stock and i was saying that you always want to get that blade covered and you cover it with one of the two guards you're bringing the back fence forward and you're bringing your top fence over so you're only exposing the piece of the blade where the material is going to go and that's a safe usage type conversation well think about that for one second and the question makes sense if i'm always milling 25 millimeter thick stock and i bring the rear fence over to expose 25 millimeter of the blade and i consistently run my stock down there i am wearing that part of the blade and over time that part of the blade will become duller than the part of the blade i'm not using so much so when i then come along to do a flat board that's much wider say 200 millimeters that 25 millimeters will be hit by a duller blade than the rest and that's true and the question is a very very good question if you know you're going to be doing that milling the same size board down continually adjust the position of your fences you know get into a routine first board will mill here then i'll move back across the planer then i'll come back again and as long as you've got that blade covered by either front sliding fence or the back fence you're still safe and by moving the position that you're milling at you'll avoid that very problem that's pointed out in the question about dulling the blade in one particular place hope that helps and the final question when can i sign up for the website so the site will be going live at the end of september probably the first of october because that's one month before the end of the woodcrafter year that wouldn't be a nice date i think but you can pre-register now go to the website www.thewoodcrafter.com click on the register link that'll take you to a form fill it in and you're pre-registered then as i'm about to launch i'll send you an email inviting you to come along and register on the site and at that point you get access to all the material that's going to be inside the site and by doing that you'll get access to the woodcrafter community there's groups in there there's discussions inside there there's hints there's tips there's blogs you can meet with like-minded people there's chat etc instant messaging all that's available as part of the community structure inside there you'll also get access to the courses limited courses at launch but i'll build those up over the years and we'll soon get some rich content going on inside there and there's also going to be a woodcrafter store so any of the products i use in the shop anyway from the big tools like the mft or the capex you'll be able to see reviews about those that i've done so i'll link into the youtube channel and then you can follow the link and you can buy that via my affiliated site and every purchase you make by the store contributes to the woodcrafter and keeps us going because i still do not want to charge for the content inside the website i want that to be free for the community so we can all use that as a resource on the store you're also going to find some merchandise merch i believe the cool kids call it so i've got t-shirts on there polo shirts on there some caps stickers cups and i'll be slowly adding to that range and that's just to allow you to get something back for your money so if you do want to support us then go and buy yourself a nice shirt and you know wear your shirt with pride and again the money will come to keeping the lights on inside what we're doing and there's also some donations if you just want to donate and thank you for those uh, beta testers who are already donated by the way that was very kind of you but if you do want to donate you can either do a recurring monthly subscription or a one-off payment so if you if you use a course and you've really liked what you've got from the course quick donation to say thank you all that comes back in purely to keeping the lights on because it is an overhead and a cost advertising website construction maintenance time on the videos there's quite a lot goes behind creating this lot so all that's coming at the end of september and that's how you can get involved so that's pretty much it for the update i'm going to have a cup of tea from my woodcrafter branded merch mug available on the website in case i've not mentioned it and i'll see you soon as we continue the coffee table series thanks for watching